Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here. I know I am super glad to be here. This thing right here, it's 2004 Doge Ram 2500. I think it's got the 5.9 diesel. Uh, I believe we have some AC issues going on with this thing. Uh, customer requested that I replace the evaporator, but I, uh, I'm gonna need to kind of figure out what's going on with this I, uh, before I do such things. Because in order to replace the evap core, stopping the engine, we have to pull the dash out. And I don't like pulling the dashes out of cars, so let's make sure we need an evaporator before I install an evaporator at 161,424 miles on the odometer. Now I understand that at temperatures above 90-ish degrees, it, uh, it kind of falls on its face a little bit and uh, it does not cool as well as it should. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna swing this into the shop. I'm gonna throw some thermal meters into the vents. I'm going to connect my machine to the system and we're just gonna do a, like a performance evaluation first and uh, see what's going on, make sure the pressures are in spec. We're gonna make sure the fans are working. We're gonna make sure that the drain is draining. And I'm gonna to try to find out what's causing the symptom before we pull a dash out of it and uh, an attempt to replace components. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Happening Z hood. Yeah, yeah we're running into a situation here. I can't really get, oh, he's gonna do the thing for me. He's moving it. Good job, bro ham. We're gonna make it past the door too. We're about to drive a Doge under a Mazda. Let's see how this works out. Yep, I'm gonna swing clear of that door, looking good. Oh, we're totally looking good, this is fantastic. I do not think that I need to lift this up on the lift just yet. Like I said, we're just gonna nose right into the corner here. All right, parking the auto. Let's go ahead and uh, find some thermal meters here for the dash. And we'll see what kind of uh, temperatures we're achieving. Okay, we'll put one right here next to the air freshener and one over here on the passenger side as well. Crank this thing up full blast. In our face, recirc is on, AC is on, temp's coming down. Let us pop in the hood and uh, we'll take a look at what's going on. All right, Ramicus, what's going on down here? Hello, Dysel. 24 panels. All right, our fan is fanning. This is good. I know the compressor's running, this is also good. Hey, check that out. Got some air horns. That's cool. All right, so we need to tap into the system. Here is our high side service valve right here. Let's open this guy up. I can see, I already see a leak. They always leak, I don't get it. I want to do a real quick leak check on this valve right here. So what I can do is we'll drop a little bit of machine oil in there and just look for some bubbles to come out. If that valve leaks, we'll see the bubbles start to bubble up from the seal and then we'll have at least one confirmed leak. It might not be the problem, but it could be a problem. Oh, there we go, got one. Okay, we got a leaker. All right, that's enough for me. Here, let's remove the contaminant. A little bit of air, there we go. No more oil. Very good. Okay, next up, we're gonna connect our service ports to our AC machine. That's the high side. Turn the valve till it stops. We don't need to make it tight. It has stopped. And our low side valve can be located right back here on the line. Pull this guy off next. What we're doing is looking to uh, take record of the pressures and make sure that none of them are out of spec. Ooh, that's frozen. That feels, there's ice on that, look at that. Yeah, there's, there's ice on that line. We don't need ice, it's not okay. Look what we've got here, we're 250, 260, climbing a little bit, and our low side is super low. 
And that that might be okay, but that's down there pretty far. Let's power this thing up. Keep powering on, booting up. So now that we have an idea of kind of where our pressures lie, let's take a look at our temperatures. That's not okay. That's 80 degrees on this side, and we are at about 58 degrees on this side. And just to make sure we are set for cold, cold, cold. Okay, so there is something going on with the uh, with the system here. Let's go ahead and shut her down. And we'll take a look down under it just to see what kind of condensation has been. Uh... Oh, not much. We're not getting AC condensation. There's been no AC water dripping. How about that? Hmm. Okay. That's good to know. All right, now what I'm gonna do is use the machine. We're gonna recover all the refrigerant in the system. Uh, the machine is going to weigh that refrigerant and tell me exactly what the charge is. Uh, once we have it recovered and we have a known quantity of, uh, of refrigerant, we can compare what we take out with the specified amount of refrigerant, which I believe is on uh, one of the stickers here. Yep, here it is. Looks like our spec is one pound, 14 ounces. So almost two pounds of refrigerant. So let's see what we have in the system and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. That's gonna be our, our path of repair for this particular uh, situation. Let's see here. Turbine Cummins. That was impulsive, I know. Hey, look at that, there's an ECU down there against the engine block. How about that? Fan feels good. There are no auxiliary electric fans. This condenser looks new, or new-ish. Wonder why it's uh, had a replacement before. Where's the compressor? Is that thing new? It's down below. Hang on, let's go down here and take a peek at our compressing unit real quick. See if that thing's any good or if it's been replaced. And looky here, look what we've got. That compressor has been replaced. So it appears to me that folks have been troubleshooting this situation. And uh, now we've uh, we've unloaded the parts cannon to a degree where my guy wants to put uh, an evaporator in it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna diagnose it first. I don't wanna just start firing parts at this car. It, it, it might need that evaporator, and that could be uh, where we land, but we don't know that yet. So it's had a compressor, it's had a condenser. Let's get out of here. Oh, climbing around, rolling in the dirt. So we've got a compressor, condenser. It does not appear that anybody has changed the service valves. That looks new. Ooh. I think I just spotted another leak. Perhaps. Looky right, look in the back right here. I know that the thing's dark so it's hard to see, but there's another low side service valve on top of this accumulator. Flashlight. Let's see if there's dye under here. And yeah, there's plenty of it in there. There's oil and dye on that valve, and we can see some saturation right here around the stem where the oil has seeped down. So that's uh, at least two leaks that I've found so far. Very interesting. Okay, how much have we recovered? Look at that. We've recovered 0.63 pounds of refrigerant so far. Very interesting. All right, the machine beeped at me and look at that, 0.767 pounds of refrigerant recovered. So this thing was super low on refrigerant. They put some parts on it. Maybe they needed it, maybe they didn't need it. Uh, not for me to judge. I'm only gonna work with what I got to work with here. So what I'm going to do, uh, before I consider pulling dashes out and replacing evaporators is I'm gonna replace these valves and I'm going to recharge this, and more importantly, I'm gonna throw a bunch of dye into the unit. And that UV dye, it's ultraviolet reactive, and that honking, that dye will tell me if and where the leak is. Now, 
I do have uh, in the back of this truck a replacement accumulator. I suppose it couldn't hurt to change that while we're here. It's not that hard to get to. And you know, we've already got a new component. I might as well go ahead and, and slap that new accumulator in there. So yeah, let's go do that real quick before, uh, before we get all crazy and start pulling dashes off. That's gonna be the plan. I'm gonna throw that one part in because it's easy, it's cheap, and we've already got a leaker on it anyway. We'll change that accumulator. We'll put some dye in the system. We'll, evac we'll vacuum it down, put it into a vacuum. We'll recharge it with the correct specified amount. Then we're gonna check performance. Now, I'm kinda gonna make a case study out of it. I'll put my one pound 14 ounces in and I will recheck it in a few days. And that's gonna tell us if in fact it is leaking or if it is not leaking. If I find out it's not leaking, then I will suggest to my customer that we not remove the dash. And uh, if, uh, if they still wanna do that, then that's what we will do. But I would at least like to have all the pertinent information uh, before we begin. Okay, we have here in a box, a new accumulating unit. Like I said, since we already have this part and my guy already bought it and it's here, I'll go ahead and get this thing installed. Because like I said, even if I end up going into the dash, I'm still gonna replace this. So let's just do that right now while the system is discharged. Okay, first things first, let's pop this clip thing off of here. Become unclipped. This is really just a safety clip. This is not the actual mechanism. And there's another one right back here on the other side of the line that goes into the evaporator into the dash. Let me get this guy off. Come here. I'm gonna drop it. Come on, don't fall. Aha, got it. Okay. Now this is the fun part, these fittings right here. Uh, inside a little disc, there is a spring. And on the opposing end, there's, there's like a lip and that spring pops over that lip and then uh, that's what secures the lines together. And we need a release tool to, uh, well, to release that. Let's see, try this one. It's gotta be like almost a perfect fit. So what we do, push down on the line. And I gotta push up on the other line and then wiggle this tool under that spring. Easier said than done, I can tell you that. And I should be able to pull these guys apart. It's a real big pain in the butt in the behind. Oh look, there's more oil from that valve leaking on me. That's cool. This one's not working. I need to try another tool. Okay, I've got a different style tool here. This one's a plastic unit, uh, similar in shape on the inside. It's gonna slap or clasp around slap. It's gonna clasp around that little fitting and I should be able to wiggle this up behind that spring to, uh, to disengage the spring. Let's see if this is gonna work. <clears throat> Maybe. Please work, I don't, I don't like these things at all. They're terrible. Ford likes them too. We rotate our little hose here. Did I get it? Sure did. See that? Okay, that one's off. Tuck that aside, and then I've got to do the same procedure way back yonder against the firewall on that other uh, connector back there. All right, so on this first line, you noticed I had to pull on it and wiggle it away and rotate it to break that surface uh, tension and or friction. Now, I won't be able to do that on this one, so what I need to do is actually disconnect this accumulator from the firewall, and that way when I get the tool behind it to release the clip, I can wiggle this thing and rotate it to separate it from the line coming out of the evaporator. So, what we do next is... I'm gonna go in there with my 10 mil and we're gonna unbolt. Looks like there's one bolt there and maybe I think two or three bolts. So we've got to pull the bolts out and then get this unit disconnected. Try to squeeze in here with the little micro impact. That's the quarter inch drive. I see two 10 mil sockets right here. Or no, sockets, bolts, I see two 10 mil fasteners. There we go. I'll bring these guys out, get rid of that one. Oh, that's interesting. I see a piece of garden hose for the evaporator drain. 
or a heater hose or something. See that? That's it. Uh, someone put that there. Okay. So now the unit has been unbolted. It does kind of move. Let's get in here and disconnect. Oh, that's the wrong one. I thought that was a larger one than the first one. It is not. The illusions of the optics got me. Come here, open up a little clamshell thing. Pull that back and kind of rotate it some to make sure we get under the little spring. So I think I felt it come under it. <sighs> Awkward, I'm standing on a little table to reach up and over this doge right here. Okay, it came free. Come on, tool, release. The shadows. Come on, tool. I need the tool to release because now the tool is hanging onto the part. There. Got it. So what I think I can do now is just wiggle and pull. There we go. And it comes free. That's what we're looking for here. Okay. Coming on out. There's our old unit. Yeah, that thing was definitely leaking out of that valve. And of course, here's our new unit, Racha. So, let's go ahead, get this guy positioned and uh, ready for install. We don't need that, we don't need that. Now, this is a slightly different design than the other one. These have studs, the other side had, uh, had bolts. I wonder, you know, I'm just gonna unbolt these, take these bolts out. It's uh, not gonna work. Or maybe that's correct and they just gave me new hardware. I don't know. I was misled by my own, own eyeballs. My own misleadings led me to become misled. Okay, pop the caps, get rid of that. Oh, looky, yeah, now we can see the little spring inside. See it in there? That's what hangs on to the lip, which is on the line side of, uh, of the other components. I would prefer just a flange with a nut, but you know, that works too, I guess. Anyway, let's maneuver this little guy back down into its position. We'll plug it in at the evaporator first. What is that, oil? Stop leak? I don't know, it's not really the right color though. I'm gonna wipe that out. Get rid of all that. It's nasty. Let's go ahead and plug this new accumulator into the line. If I can get it oriented properly. Come here, tangled up mess of uh, HVAC hoses. I'm stuck. Oh, I'm so stuck. There and you, there. Now we're unstuck. Good job, Ray. Slide this thing in, we'll push it in until it clicks, and then we can put the mounting screws back. Begin clicking now. You gotta be careful with stuff like this too. If you wrench on it too hard, you'll actually break the condenser or uh, the evaporator inside because they're not very structurally sound devices and they can very easily become damaged if mishandled. Okay, that one's in. This one here, slide that guy on. Give it some twists and some wiggles. Looks like I'm gonna have to use my second hand. Clicks, that one clicked on. Oop, that one's not all the way seated. Could have been a fail. Oh, that sound is horrible. Uh, one last little Hail Mary to get that thing attached. I'm climbing up and over. I think that was it. And it was not. WTF, Batman.
There it is, that's it. And I pull and it's not coming out, got it, very good. Now, I'm gonna go in here, throw a couple of these little bolts in, and then uh, we'll change the surface ports next. Okay, let's buzz these bolts down. I went in with the ratchet this time, not the impact. Tight squeezes and all. Click. There we go. All right, that unit is now secured and installed. Let's change this service valve and then the high side valve. Then we will recharge, reevaluate the system, and then uh, we'll go from there. We'll make determinations uh, based on how it runs, on what to do with the under dash section. Oh, I can't even get to the valve. It's wrong angle on my dangle here. I need a shorter one of these. Lucky for me, I have multiples. You know why? Because I, uh, I ran out a few days ago, or I lost one, or I lost my last one, and you guys saw that and proceeded to send me like 100 of these things, which is really cool. Anyway, there's, a, there's my small low side Schrader. And over here to the large one that we know has a leak. Yeah, let's pull this guy out next. Come out, come out. Please. Oh, it's gone. I wanted to inspect that. Really? No, it's it's in there. We're gonna find that. I heard it go tinka tinka tink. I see it down there. It's like it's way down there. Hmm. Here, I will get it with the claw. I have a claw device. You push the little button, and then the claw comes out. That, that will recover that which I have lost. Maybe. It's like the claw game from Toy Story. The claw. Got it. Here it comes. I wish I could have videoed that, but it's too far away. Hmm. Let's see what we have here. So we've got our external O-ring. That's the little green one. And there's supposed to be more O-ring on the flat at the bottom of that little valve thing. And it appears that that also uses this little green O-ring. So that's one O-ring that does two things. Regardless, I'm putting a new one in it. That's what I do. All right, coming in with my new replacement Schrader valve. So here's our, oh, focus. Here's our old one that we know was leaking. Here's our new one. And I think the only real difference we're gonna get out of it is gonna be that little O-ring seal down there at the bottom. Stay focusing, it's not doing it. Okay, well, that's my new one. That's going in, this one, gone. Don't need that. And here's the larger high side. Let's see here. You can see what type of ceiling surface that has. Now this one, this design here, that's actually using two O-rings. No, stay focused. It's using two O-rings, one for the plunger, and then one for the uh, the housing. So we're gonna replace this one with this one. That should help keep a seal. Drop that guy in and tighten her down like so. We don't need to tighten it to the moon. Just you know, good and snug. There we go. And then head over, tighten up and install the little Schrader. Put that guy up in there. Don't fall out, stay, 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 stay. Very good. Again, we don't tighten it to the moon, just snug it up. Or more tighter er. It's not always better er. Or ist. Or better. Or correct. Finger clicks. There we go. Okay. That's good. Let's refetch our machine. Flashlight. There it is. Flashlight gravity. It wasn't even in use. Anyway, let's reconnect to the vehicle. 
We're gonna put this thing into a vacuum probably about 15 minutes just to make sure all of the air and moisture that entered the system uh, has been in fact evacuated. Then I will recharge, then reevaluate system performance. We wanna make sure it stays cold or is cold. Please get on there, there you go. Okay, that's tight. And back around to the front of our machine. Remember seven points, or I'm sorry, point seven, six, seven pounds. That's what we recovered. We're gonna vacuum. Begin vacuuming now. And again, the vacuum pump in the machine is gonna pull that AC system down into a vacuum of 29.9 inches vacuum because you, uh, for inches mercury, you almost cannot achieve 30 inches. We'll do 15 minutes. That way we're 50% better than the industry standard and we're not in a hurry. Vacuuming has begun. And we will hang out until that thing is done. We'll install the charge and then go from there. All right, coming back over. Looks like we're done vacuuming. Let's go ahead and install our refrigerant charge. This is not a PoE system. So that gets the X and refresher. We are at one pound, 14 ounces. Again, almost two pounds. That is 0 0.850 kilograms, 0 0.850. So we're not gonna save. Come on. Mm, I don't wanna do pounds and ounces. So we'll just do this in metric kilograms, zero, zero, eight, five zero kilograms and I like to charge on the low side. Wait, wait, doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Actually, stand, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna throw some dye in this before I charge it. It doesn't really like to take the dye uh, when the charge is full. I've gotta force it in past a uh, past the line pressure here. So, go ahead and take this guy, plug you in and it will run uh, about a half ounce in there or something like that. Just kind of screw that down some and it's going to inject some liquid. Just connectored. And we've got liquid dye right here, see that? Now I can go ahead and plug this guy back in. This is why I like to do the low side charge. Ow, finger got caught. The low side charge, if I send all the refrigerant right through here, it'll help to pick up that dye and disperse it. And that's the idea. So we're on the high side. Uh, how do I switch you to low side? There we go, low side. Begin low side charge now. Beep. I don't have enough insufficient refrigerant. Oh no. Oh no, my tank's empty. Okay. Hang on, let's close these valves. Let's check the tank. Yeah, that tank's empty. Okay, I need to order another tank. Hang on. Pause, cut, fail. All right, I've thrown a new tank on there, so we're gonna go down. It's already installed in the back. We're gonna go down to tank fill. There's a, the external tank, and then there's an internal tank, and the internal tank is where it draws from uh, when it's servicing. We're gonna fill, let's go ahead and fill, uh, mm, we'll put five pounds in there. It's a 10 pound tank, so we'll do half the tank. Five pounds. So the valve is open down below. Those are closed. That way we don't try to recover from there. And it's gonna go ahead and fill the internal tank from the new external tank. And then, uh, then we can proceed to charge the vehicle. So minor setback, no worries, be right back. Okay, it beeped at me. So we've got five pounds refrigerant in the internal tank. So we're done with this menu. Let's get out of here. Now we can go back to charge and charge the vehicle. Initializing, blah, 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 all that good stuff. 
Do not save service records, yep. Okay, let's go reopen up our valves over here. Again, we just turn them until they kind of stop. Don't crank them down. Tight does not mean open. The fact that it threaded and it pushed on the valve is what means it's okay, open. Okay, we had originally set that up in metric. So we're gonna do it again in metric. That's point eight five zero kilograms. And we want to charge that on our low side. Remember the die. Do the low side, 0 0.850. Let's just double check. In 0 0.850 kilograms, that is good. Begin charging now. Purging. Begin purging now. Yes, purging. Finish purging, begin charging. Come on with it. Reading tank weight, do not disturb. Oh, forgot, low side, there we go. We are charging, beginning, be right back as soon as that's done. And while it's charging, let's put our little clips back on the lines here. They just kind of snap back in position, real easy like. We'll get the one out back, snap that guy on, and we can get our goodies off of our wiper cowl up here. Tools, fasteners, little plasticky bits. Come here, little plastic thing. There we go. Okay, I heard another beep. We're good on the beep. We're gonna go ahead and hose equalize. Uh, continue. What that's gonna do is that's just gonna install a pre-programmed amount of refrigerant, and that's designed to displace the amount that is in the in the lines right here. You see, when, uh, when it took the refrigerant from the internal tank, which has a scale on it, it knows exactly how much it sent away from the tank but it does not, uh, it didn't compensate yet for how much goes in the hoses. So we're just gonna add a little bit more to push what's in the hoses through and into the system. That will complete the charge. There we go. And it, that assures that we have the full amount inside of the vehicle itself. Let's get this out of here too. Over here with you for now. Okay, I think we're probably in a position where we can start this system back up and we're gonna check system performance restarting the diesel engine okay compressor came on we've got a pressure differential forming here our high side's going up see our low side we're about 32 35 psi that's what we want to see on the low side not 20. that actually could have been why it was freezing i want to see this thing stop around 275 260. Come on, oh, getting a little high. Not the fan. Yep, the fan is fanning. Feel some heat here in the condenser. That means that it's picking up heat from inside of the cabin in the evaporator. That heat is being transferred into the refrigerant. It's flowing through the system. And up front here, we're gonna expect that heat to dissipate Ah, refrigerant delivery, another. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's go back, check our pressures. Compressor just kicked off, look at that. We're falling, it should kick on any second. I heard the click. Compressor on, pressure's going up, so now we're cycling. We're doing what we need to be doing. Let's head inside and start to check the temperatures at, uh, at our thermal meters here. Fire this up a little bit higher. Look at that. Look at that. We're 45 degrees, 44 degrees. And over here on the passenger side, we're about 60. Let's switch these around and make sure they're accurate. Here, you go in there. You go in here. We're, we're testing our gauges. Okay, that one's going up some. Passenger hot, passenger cold. Let's just run full heat. Yep, temp's coming up, temp's coming up, temp's coming up. So we know the driver's side door is effective. We'll turn driver's side back down. We should see that temp drop in a moment. 
passenger side, that's 70 degrees, 75. Okay, let's go ahead and switch that out to cold. We'll let the thing stabilize again and we'll see where these things land. Let me get that door closed. And this door. We want to do this doors closed, windows up ish. Now we're going to have to drive this to really get decent and accurate readings. We can get good baseline measurements here inside, but what we really need is airflow over that condenser. Now we do have some with the fan, but when we're diagnosing, especially a, a trouble vehicle, we really need to put it on the road just to verify things. Disconnect that, disconnect the high side. Now, and now there's still refrigerant in these lines. So what we need to do next is recover those lines. We're gonna take all that refrigerant back inside of these and put it back into the storage tank. Otherwise it will seep out over time and we'll lose that amount of refrigerant. Screw these guys on. I may as well put the uh, the little drain thing back on. I need to check this for condensing water when we get back. There we go, drain hose. Okay, let's get the light bars out of the way, and we're gonna pack this thing out and go for a ride. You go right there. Let's see, that thing's done. Let's go ahead and close the hood. Goodbye, air horns. Ram horns. Leave nothing behind. See that? I moved through the matrix just then. It must be upsetting the code. All right, Ram Doja Kiss. Looky there. Where are we at on the passenger side? 45 degrees. I accept that. That's fantastic. And over here on the driver's side, uh, about 45 degrees. So we're right on the money. It's right where it should be. Again, we're going to go drive it, make sure. Make sure it doesn't freeze and any of that good stuff or bad stuff. Backing out the auto. Check in the corner. Check in the other corner. I think we're good here. Got another Jeep over there. Got a lot of Jeeps. Backing up, backing up. Beep, beep, beep. Clearing all obstacles. Looking good. Looking good back there. Hey, don't get run over. And cutting it hard. All right, riding along in our diesel mobile. Temperatures are still nice and, uh, well, they're cold. They're very cold. It's super duper cold. Look at that, 40 degrees. I'd say that's right on the money. It's incredible how well these heat exchange systems perform when they have the uh, necessary uh, refrigerant to exchange the heat. That's all this is, is a big circular liquid powered heat pump. And it uses the refrigerant, the Freon, which is a brand name, not a not a compound, but it uses the Freon uh, to pick up that heat from one heat exchanger in the dash and take it out to another heat exchanger up front. The air flows over it, removes the heat, it goes in the compressor, it's pumped up, it's atomized through uh, the metering device and then it becomes cold through that atomization. Similar to if you, um, if you were spraying a can of spray paint and you kept spraying and spraying and spraying and spraying and then the can becomes cold. It's a similar effect. We're going from a change of state of matter and uh, that also requires a change of energy and that change of energy is where you lose heat and that's where we get the perception of cold. So anyway, that will conclude my physics and science explanation uh, about HVAC systems. Uh, again, my customer did want me to remove the dash out of this and put uh, put an evaporator in it and change some of the blend doors. Um, I wanted to at least diagnose it before doing such things, which is exactly what we did today. So I may actually end up doing more work uh, on this particular doge, but I do have to let my customer know where we're at and what I have found. And I would also, again, like to case study that low refrigerant because I know it's been refilled before. So there may be a, a follow-up episode on this doge. Uh, there may not be. It's all gonna depend on what the owner wants to do. 
Uh, that being said, uh, this video is reaching conclusion and I'm going to go ahead and close this video out for right now. I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, then uh, let me know what you did not enjoy in the comments section also down below. And I can use your constructive criticism to produce better quality videos in the future. And that will end my moment of shameless rambling and self-promotion. So, again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of air-conditioned transmission. There we go, we're clear, more steam. We need to get some uh, some throttle going, some RPM, and some airflow, just to make sure this thing doesn't freeze up when it's at its uh, maximum chuchability, which is possible. Yeah, I don't think so. We're making dang good cold though, look at that. That's what we're looking for, I like it.